This is it! It's the last one! It's the one you've all been waiting for. Not really. Everyone, and welcome to the sixth and final episode of my video series for the 82nd Academy Awards ceremony. The first, or should I say the third last category for tonight, is Best Animated Feature Film of the Year. And the nominees are Coraline, Fantastic Mr. Fox, The Princess and the Frog, The Secret of Kells, and up. Alright, first of all, what in the hell is the secret of Kells? And it should be no surprise that my pick, as well as the their pick, and the one that's probably definitely going to win is Up. Never has a Pixar film been so emotional and been so emotionally driven, like it depended on that in order to be a great film. And it, you know, it, it achieved at that. You know, it wasn't like, um, it wasn't like they only relied on that because they didn't have great animation or didn't have a good story. It had a great story, it had great animation, great, had great laughs, great humor, great action even. But it was the emotion that came out of that movie that really stood out apart from anything else in that film. All the other nominees are amazing. You know, Princess and the Frog, Coraline, you know, there were great movies. Fantastic Mr. Fox, which was actually one of my favorite movies of 2009. But Up really stood out out of all of these nominees. Not to mention, that Best Picture nomination probably secures the absolute win for Up in this category. Next category is Best Director. My favorite category out of the entire Academy Awards in general. I mean, I love this category because I want to be a director as well. The nominees are Catherine Bigelow for The Hurt Locker. James Cameron for Avatar, Lee Daniels for Precious, Jason Reitman for Up in the Air, and Quentin Tarantino for Inglourious Bastards. Now I heard this somewhere, I can't remember who said it, but they said that if James Cameron have not made Titanic, he would have a great shot in this category this year. But he did, so I really don't see him winning at all. My absolute pick, and it's actually being uh, speculated that it is the pick that's going to win is uh, Catherine Bigelow for The Hurt Locker. Uh, you know, she she was one, she's one of the very few people who have actually captured the technique of handheld uh, you know camera use in films and didn't make it annoying. It didn't you know make me nauseous or anything. It actually captured the realism of the film. You know, it wasn't some. I'm really not that big of, of a fan of Paul Greengrass who uses that you know sense of style for his filming. You know, in terms of the handheld camera deal with almost all of his films, especially the Bourne trilogy. Never been a fan of him uh, because he shakes the camera so damn much. You know, a tripod would be an interesting Christmas present for him, but Catherine Bigelow is one of the very few people who have mastered the handheld technique in a, you know, in a film such as this where there's a lot of, a lot of things going on. Not to mention, it would be amazing to see the first woman ever to win Best Director this year. Everybody really wants to see that, including the Academy. And I really do think they're going to aim at Catherine Bigelow for The Heart Locker. The long shot, however, and I really wouldn't mind one damn bit if he won, would be Quentin Tarantino for Inglourious Bastards. I can tell by the look of how he explains movies, raising his hands and whatnot, that he loves directing. And if he wins this, he's going to be so freaking happy, but I really do not see him winning, even though I really do, wouldn't mind him winning. Uh, I want him to win this Oscar for Best Director before he either dies or before he retires, but I really don't think this is going to be the night for him. Same thing goes for Jason Reitman and Lee Daniels. And last, but certainly not least, Best Motion Picture of the Year. Probably one of the most controversial and interesting categories this year. And of course, the main uh, fact for that is the fact that we now have 10 Best Picture nominees instead of 5. We have gone back in time, back to, I think, the 1930s, where we actually used to do 10 Best Picture nominees instead of just 5. And now we went back to 5, and now we're back to 10. And it makes things a lot more interesting, and at the same time, much more controversial. The nominees are Avatar, The Blind Side, District 9, an education, The Hurt Locker, Inglorious Bastards, Precious based on the novel Push by Sapphire, A Serious Man, Up and Up in the Air. Now, I do say controversial because there's some films in here that if it wasn't for the stretch to 10 Best Picture nominees, they would not even be considered as a Best Picture nominee. Such films include An Education, A Serious Man, Up, even maybe even Precious, and sadly, I would have to say District 9, since it is my number one movie of 2009. With that being said, I have 
two picks that I would love to see win Best Picture. Both of these picks express my two sides uh, as a moviegoer. The film critic side and the simply I just want to have fun and you know some cool action side of me. Um, and the side for that side in which I just want to see stuff blow up and you know have a really fun time watching a movie the pick for that side is District 9. I loved that movie to death. I really loved it. I talked about it for almost a week after I saw it. And, uh, you know, it's my it's my number one movie of the year. And I, it would be a miracle if District 9 would, uh, would win Best Picture. It is, however, doubtful. I doubt, 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 doubt it's going to win. I severely doubt. Like I said, District 9 is one of those movies that it wouldn't have made it onto this, uh, you know, this category if it wasn't for that stretch. And I missed it, but another movie that it wouldn't have made it onto here would be The Blind Side. What the hell is The Blind Side being on Best Picture? I, I, I really don't know why it has been nominated for that. So my other pick that defines my other side of my movie going experience, which is the film, you know, critical side, would have to be The Hurt Locker. And actually this one's being a, you know, a really personal favorite for the Academy. A lot of people are saying, yeah, The Hurt Locker could be the David and Avatar would be the Goliath and uh, The Hurt Locker would take home the uh, Best Picture Oscar once and for all. There is some controversy behind this because recently, one of the dumbass producers of this movie went along and emailed the Academy saying, Hey, if you loved The Hurt Locker, please vote for us. We would really appreciate it. Much like a lot of people here on YouTube do, you know, subscribe, subscribe, and... No, wait, that's me. But this is illegal, and they this could definitely hurt their chances of winning. And it's a sad thing to see that one of these stupid producers would go along and do something like this. And he did formally... He, I think he even sent them an email saying, please forget I even did that hours later after he sent that out. He's like, please forget I did that. I'm sorry. That was way out of line. Please forget that I did that. And just go you know, like that. And he's now hoping that they forgot all about it and they will still consider Avatar as... I mean, Avatar... Blah, blah, blah. Ah, James Cameron's already cursing me. Hurt Locker for a Best Picture win. All of the movies were great. But like I said, my two picks are District 9, which is more likely not going to win and The Hurt Locker. Their picks could very well be either The Hurt Locker or, like I said, it's Goliath and the film that I really wouldn't really like to see win, and that is, of course, Avatar. Now, for those of you who really are into the Academy Awards, you probably should have noticed that I did skip a couple of categories. Um, you know, I, I wanted to tell myself I'm going to cover every single category because I want to give you guys everything. But there were some categories I had to skip because I somehow knew that you guys weren't going to know the nominees for those categories. You probably haven't even heard of the films at all. Such categories include Best Documentary, Best Documentary Short, or Short Subject, I should say, Best Live Action Short, Best Animated Short, and Best Foreign Film. It was a huge surprise that in the Best Animated Short category, there was no Pixar Short. That's what drove me away from covering that category because there was no big Pixar short that was amazing. Last year there was. This year, nothing. And best foreign film. Uh, there are a few foreign films out there that I really, really love. But out of all these nominees, none of them really interest me. And I'm going to go ahead and take a really, really quick pick here. And I'm going to have to say that if I have to choose, if my life depended on it, I have to choose one nominee out of the best foreign film uh, category, I would have to say The White Ribbon. I've heard nothing but good things from that movie, aside from all the other nominees. So if you're still watching this, my pick for Best Foreign Film, White Ribbon. And there have also been plenty of snubs this year. There were some, you know, huge snubs, such as Marianne Cotillard for Best Actress, Tobey Maguire for Best Actor. Um, and there were some snubs where I was expecting them to get nominated, but them being not nominated, I really don't... I really don't care, such as uh, Nine for Best Picture or Director. It's it's funny because Nine was being helmed as this big Oscar contender when it was, you know, like a month before it came out. People were saying, this is going to be an Oscar t contender. This was going to be the Avatar, the Hurt Locker. And this was a month before the movie even came out. And I'm like, why are you saying this? The movie hasn't even come out yet. Wait until the movie comes out and then tell us whether or not it's an Oscar contender. All that Oscar talk about Nine, shut up. 
after the movie came out. They realized that this wasn't really a great, great movie. It was probably a good movie. I haven't seen it. Yeah, I have not seen it. But um, they probably said, yeah, it's a good movie. Not uh, Oscar worthy necessarily. A lot of great nominees were nominated this year. It has got to be one of the best years in recent memory for the Oscars as well as moviegoers alike. We got 10 Best Picture nominees, we got 5 great actors, actresses, supporting actors, supporting actresses nominated, 5 great directors, one of them being a very unique one and one w uh, one that would be amazing if she won. Obviously you know who I'm talking about. Who will win? Find out tonight at the 82nd Academy Awards. Tune in on ABC at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. I mean, uh, 7 p.m. Central, 5 p.m. Western. I'm trying to work out the times here. Tune in on ABC. I'll see you guys there.